So I invest for dividends and passive income. I like to invest in publicly traded companies that pay dividends typically on a quarterly basis and I receive these dividend checks literally for doing nothing other than owning these companies. It's passive income that I like to earn while I'm sleeping. And I have a growing YouTube channel here that gets a lot of amazing comments and questions from subscribers. And one of the questions that keeps coming through is, hey Ian, can you please share a specific example? Can you please share an example from your portfolio of a stock that you own that has increased the dividends over time? And in particular, the foundation of my strategy is not only holding stocks that pay a dividend, but they pay an increasing stream of dividends. That's why my strategy is all about dividend growth investing and not just dividend investing. It's about the growth. It's about growing the dividend over time. And there's this concept of yield on cost. And this concept has become a little bit confusing. It's a little bit hard to wrap one's hands around. And so I wanted to share a specific example from my portfolio today about how I have held a stock since 2011. It has increased its dividend each year and my yield on cost over time has increased over time. And so I wanna go into that very specific example today. I am talking about none other than the Clorox company, ticker symbol CLX. Hey everyone, welcome back to another PPC Ian Dividend Investing video. Today's video is a subscriber question. It's in response to a subscriber question about sharing an example from my portfolio. So I'm gonna be talking today about Clorox. What I have right here are some Clorox wipes from my household. If you go through my household, you'll find a number of Clorox products and these are the types of companies I love to invest in because they are household brands. These are brands that people need, no matter whether the economy is really good, it's a really bad economy. When the cold and flu season around is around, it's always helpful to have some Clorox wipes around. And obviously for one's laundry needs, Clorox bleach is really helpful for one's personal care and cosmetics needs. The Burt's Bees brand is really strong. And so I personally really like this company. I've been holding this company since 2011. And I wanna use this company as an example today of how dividends can increase over time and what it means when dividends increase so that I can hopefully help folks out there really understand this concept of dividend growth investing and yield on cost. So. I wanna jump right into it. What you see here is a numerical representation of what has happened with the Clorox dividend over time. I first bought this stock in 2011. When I purchased this stock, it was trading at $69 per share and that's where I purchased. And so you can see here my purchase price, $69, that's what it is. And I leave the purchase price in this table stagnant over the years. I'm trying to make a point here. When one buys a stock for a particular purchase price, maybe they'll have multiple purchases over time. That's not what I'm trying to represent here. What I'm trying to represent here is that when I bought in 2011, my purchase price was $69. And each year that goes forward in time, my purchase price doesn't change. It's always $69. But what does change is the dividend. So anyways, 2011, the starting dividend was $2.30. If I take $2.30, I divide it by $69. My starting yield when I first purchased Clorox was 3.3%. I've gotten comments here on my channel. Hey, Ian, 3.3%, that's not very good. These starting yields, they're not very exciting. It's not going to change my life. And I would answer to that, that is very true. Maybe they're nice, especially with some of the higher yielding stocks. You can bring a little bit of future income into the present, such as the, the real estate investment trust sector, the utilities sector. They tend to have higher starting yields, but they grow the dividend slower. Whereas a company like Clorox tends to have a little bit of a lower starting yield, but they grow the dividend pretty rapidly. Anyways, that starting yield is not maybe that exciting. It's actually exciting for me. It's a pretty good starting yield, but for most people out there, maybe that's not very enticing. But what happens is let's fast forward to 2012. In 2012, Clorox actually increased the dividend payout to $2.48. $2.48 versus $2.30, that's an increase of 7.8% year over year, not bad. And so if I take my same $69 purchase price, purchase price doesn't change, it's whatever I paid for in 2011 when I bought the stock, but if I take my new dividend, $2.48, I divide by my original purchase price, $69, my yield on cost is now 3.6%. 
This is the magic of dividend growth. By holding this stock literally for one year, my yield went from being 3.3 to 3.6. Let's keep going. 2013, they raised the dividend again. In 2013, they raised it by 8.9%. That's a pretty substantial dividend increase. That's really exciting. I like a stock that can just hold it in the 7% range. So going up as high as 8.9, that's pretty, pretty fantastic. Anyways, in um, 2013, $2.70 dividend payout if I divide again by my original purchase price of $69, now my yield is 3.9%, starting to get interesting. My yield on cost, the yield I am realizing is 3.9%. It doesn't matter what the present yield is. If someone's buying in in 2013, that doesn't really affect me unless I'm buying more of the stock, I'm averaging in. but. It doesn't affect me. What affects me is the current dividend and my purchase price, which makes my yield on cost 3.9, which is starting to get really interesting. Anyways, if you fast forward to 2014, they increased the dividend again by 7.4%, another big increase. 7.4%. So in 2014, we're up at $2.90 dividend yield. Divide that by the $69. Now we're in the 4% range. We're at 4.2% yield on cost. And it just keeps getting better. In 2015, they raised the dividend by 4.1%. I guess not as exciting of a year, but still, that's respectable. That's all right. 2016, they raised it by 4%. Again, not that exciting, but it's a nice increase. 2017, they raised it by 4.5%. But here's where it gets interesting. Due to tax reform, Clorox is anticipating that their business is going to do really well. It's going to function really well. They're going to be able to save some expenses on taxes, and it's going to free up cash to be able to pay out even more dividends. And so Clorox just announced a monster dividend increase of 14%. And in fact, the dividend is going to 96 cents per quarter, whereas it used to be 84 cents per quarter. And so a 14% dividend increase is just music to my ears. And so anyways, in 2018, it's anticipated that they're going to pay out $3.72 in dividend income. Again, my purchase price hasn't changed. It's the same whatever I paid in 2011 when I first bought it. $3.72 divided by $69 brings my yield on cost to 5.4%. It actually gets better than that because 2018 has one quarter in it, the first quarter with the old dividend payout before the increase. If I just annualize the new dividend rate over the next 12 months, it's actually 384 and so my yield on cost becomes a 5.6%. So again, this is the magic and I'll tell you right now Clorox for example, it's trading at $131.70. So I bought it 69, so I'm actually up 91% just in capital appreciation, not even looking at the dividends I've received over the years. Just capital appreciation, stock price increase, I'm up 91%. But that's not the point of today's video. What the point is, is if someone buys now at $131.70 and you take the current dividend payout for the next 12 months of 384, the starting yield is 2.92%. So, and it's a little lower than what it used to be when I bought, and that makes sense because the market has um, done well and companies are typically trading out higher PE ratios, lower dividend yields. It's a more richly valued market. But this is the magic of dividend growth investing. It's the fact that I can buy in 2011, I can hold for all these years, and I can be yielding 5.6% yield on cost. Whereas someone starting now in 2018, they're just starting, they're gonna start out at 2.92. Now the person starting in 2018, if they hold it a really long time like I have, they will start seeing those benefits as well. And so this is why I'm always averaging into positions. I'm always buying more. I'm adding to my stock positions over time. This is not something where I just buy it, set it and forget it. I'm trying to invest very regularly and I always look for the best values in my portfolio, the stocks that are on sale, the stocks that are attractive at the present moment and I will buy even more. But the point of this video is to really put some numbers behind this idea of what does it mean when a company grows its dividend. This is what it means. Clorox has taken their dividend just since I have owned this stock from $2.30 per share per year and now on a forward 12 month cycle we're up at $3.84 
per share. And so that is just a fabulous track record. That is a company that is shareholder friendly. And that's what it means when a company increases its dividend. And this is also from an investor standpoint what it means over time. Putting some, some numbers behind this, let's say I invest uh, just hypothetically $1,000. Would a 3.3% yield, I'm getting $33 dollars per year in dividend income. But just by sitting around and doing nothing all these years, at a 5.6% yield, now I'm getting $56 a year. And what's interesting here is that doesn't even count reinvesting dividends. Over all these years, if I take the dividends that are being paid out, I reinvest them to buy more shares, which also in turn pay dividends, that can compound the snowball even quicker. And so that's also part of the magic of dividend growth investing is it's reinvesting the dividends until one wants to live financial freedom, wants to tap into their dividend income for living expenses. Until then, it's often wise to reinvest the dividend because it can accelerate the dollar payout, the amount of dollar income that one is receiving even quicker. And so before I leave today, just a few interesting tidbits about Clorox, as long as we're on the stock. I did a video recently about my personal portfolio, how I own 36 positions. I'm going to link to it in the description below. I talked about how I have core positions, medium and small. Clorox is considered a core position. I like Clorox. It's a major position. It's one in the future when I do achieve financial freedom that I see contributing a large amount of my passive income, and that's why I consider it a core position. I like this company because they make products like this that are needed in good times and bad. These are always evergreen products. One of the things I like about Clorox as well is their revenue growth has been good, their earnings growth has been good. Even in recent years where big um, consumer products companies have faced some challenges and they've faced some challenges with top line growth, with the revenue growth. Clorox has not experienced that to the extent of other companies in the industry. And um, that's something I like about Clorox. I like the fact that their debt is reasonable. It seems like they're managing their debt really well. I like the fact that their margins are really strong as well. So they've got great margins on the products that they are selling. If there is one thing I have to continue to look out for with Clorox, and I have always had it on my radar, is its international growth. This company derives the lion's share of its revenue from the United States, and they do have an international footprint, but that footprint has been um, small, and that footprint hasn't been growing as quickly as um, some of its competitors. And so the, uh, it's kind of a, a gift and a curse, I guess. I think it's kind of an opportunity for Clorox really to spread its wings and to grow internationally. And if they can do that, this could be even quicker dividend growth in the future because they, they, they will grow their dividend as quickly as they can grow their earnings. And by contrast, if earnings growth is slow, there will be less room to grow the dividend and it will grow um, less quickly. But anyways, I think that's something to watch out for, but also an opportunity if they can really crack the code on that international growth and really um, spearhead that international growth. I would say um, something else worth noting that I really like about Clorox is this company has been raising its dividends since 1977. Every year since 1977, according to their um, investor relations website, they have been increasing the dividend over time. And so that is, um, that is really fabulous. That is something that I respect. And just when I'm reading the annual reports from Clorox, it's very shareholder friendly. They're talking directly to the shareholders saying, hey shareholders, this is the amount of capital we've been able to return to you in the form of dividends. We're, we're in this for you. We're rewarding you shareholders. And that's the kind of company I like as a shareholder friendly company that pays dividends, pays increasing streams of dividends rather than hoarding cash. Companies that hoard cash, in my opinion, aren't as shareholder friendly as a company like Clorox. So before I leave today, a fun story. What even prompted this video? Well, obviously all of these great questions, but also on my Instagram, which I'm gonna to link to in the description below, please connect with me there. I'm having some great conversations with subscribers there. One of my subscribers reached out and said, hey Ian, company I own, AbV, um, this is a pharmaceuticals company, used to be part of Abbott Labs. Abbott Labs split a number of years ago into Abbott Labs and AbV. AbV just raised their dividend 35%. I don't own this company, by the way, but when I saw that, I was actually very happy for the subscriber, of course, but I was a little bit jealous. <laughs> and so I was looking, wow, that's amazing. I want to look through my portfolio and see if I have any stocks that just increased their dividend a lot. And I found one. I found Clorox. I was very happy for that. My 14% can't really compete with AbbVie's 35%, but I, I'm certainly happy with my 14%. I want to congratulate that subscriber who got that 35% raise. Um, 
with AbbVie. I think that's just, just wonderful. And here's another way of looking at this before I leave today. Many of us probably, or most of us watching this channel or discussing dividends here on YouTube have a job. And the question becomes, last time you received a raise at your job, say 35% in the case of AbbVie or 14% in the, um, in the case of Clorox, how hard did you have to work for that, that increase? Was it even possible to get a raise of that amount? Most of the people I talk to, it's pretty, it's pretty difficult to get a raise that high. And if one does receive a raise year over year, that amount, the amount of responsibility that comes with it is huge. And it can be a lot more time, pressure, and um, focus, skill level, all of that that goes into it. The beauty with dividend growth investing is literally just for owning this stock, Clorox gave me a 14% raise year over year for literally doing nothing other than owning this company, doing my research, staying up to date with the company, tracking it, buying it, and being a loyal shareholder, they gave me a 14% raise. And those AbbVie shareholders literally got a 35% raise. And just think, how difficult was it the last time that if ever you got a 35% raise at a job. It's pretty difficult. And so this is the difference between active income and passive income. Active income, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. We all need active income. We need to pay the bills. And how else are we going to buy stocks to drive passive income? It, it's typically through active income. And so, but, but that being said, active income can be very difficult. It's very tiring at times to earn that kind of raise. Whereas with passive income, this is the magic. People are getting a raise. Shareholders are getting a raise literally for owning the stock and, um, and enjoying it and being loyal to the company. My name is Ian Lopuck. I'm from ppcian.com. Thank you so much for watching the video today. Thank you for that subscriber question. I really enjoyed that one as always. If you enjoyed the video today, you want to support my channel, I would really appreciate it. It would be um, very much appreciated. I'm trying to grow this channel, build one of the biggest and best communities here on YouTube for personal finance, especially for passive income and dividend investing. So please go ahead and like the video, comment, subscribe, all of that. It is the greatest way you can thank me. It means the world. I try to answer to most, if not all, of the questions that come my way. And um, before I leave today, just in terms of full disclosure, I personally own stock in the Clorox company, ticker symbol CLX. I own that one in my stock portfolio. And also, in terms of a friendly disclaimer, I'm not a licensed investment advisor. Today's video is not investment advice. This video is just for your fun and entertainment. If you are going to go out and invest in the stock market or anywhere else, please do consult a licensed financial advisor first. So I will see all of you in the next video. I hope if you are out there investing in dividend stocks, in addition to the Clorox increase, the AbV one, I hope you all are participating in other increases that are coming. It seems like some of the tax reform may drive even more dividend increases across the board. So we'll see what happens. But it's certainly a nice time of the year to be um, getting an instant 14% increase year over year. So how exciting is that? Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.